Tanya Talks. I'm your host, Tanya Ricketts. Uh, real time, uh, real people, real events, <laughs> uh, real issues. And we are joined tonight with Teresa Simpatico and Tanya Smith, NLP coach. Um, welcome this evening, ladies. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good evening, I should say. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Yeah, it's going to be a fun night for us uh, because, you know, we were just giggling offline just pre-show because we're talking about energy and source energy and where are we going with this and what, you know, the conversation and we love the topic of energy. So we are very, um, you know, just talking about um, candidly and unscripted what source energy is. You know, there's many different directions and just simplifying it and saying energy, you know, um, so anybody, any one of us is able to begin energy. Let, let's dive in. What does that look like? What does that mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to start here, Tanya. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when I think of energy, there's so much involved with energy, right? Because for me, when you talk about source energy, I think about God and the universe or Allah or whoever you believe in, like the energy of, uh, that overshadows us sort of is there on our journey, right? And I truly believe that that energy exists, right? But more importantly, I believe that the energy, the source energy is really within us and that it, it creates this power when you know that it's there. It's a type of energy that you can do so many things with, changing um, narratives, uh, changing your life, uh, having good intuition, um, just being able to heal certain ailments, uh, being more content. So when you find that energy with, you know, in your heart and at your core, then I feel like that's the real important energy, no matter what's going on and what our faith is and what we believe, ultimately the energy with, within us to me is the most powerful energy. And I, I would agree with Teresa on that because I think sometimes we forget how powerful we are as beings. So, you know, we're made up with, with all these, all this energy we have inside of us, but do we actually believe that we have the power that we do? Um, so I was actually having, I was telling Teresa and Tanya, I had a, a conversation with a girlfriend earlier this week and, you know, she's been complaining. She hasn't been feeling too well and just different things happening with her. And I asked her, you know, do you believe that you have the power to heal yourself and it actually had to, she had to ask me at least five or five to six times, like, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean? And I said, do you believe? So when I asked her, like, just her thinking off the top of her head, do you think that you can heal yourself? She's like, yeah, I can heal myself. But when I asked her, do you believe that you have it in you to heal yourself? She didn't have that belief that she could he actually heal herself. So when you think about all the energy, like what Teresa talked about that we have inside of us and just believing in that and knowing the power that we have to move things. Even think about the times when, you know, something that has been going on that you just wanted to shift and you put it in your mind or you said, you know, this is what's gonna happen and you just start moving or just, you know, presenting yourself in a different way. And that it just totally shift the energy of everything and lined everything up how you wanted it to. It's um, sometimes when I think about it, it's just like, I can't believe how powerful we are as human beings. Like it's right. just so fascinating to me. It's definitely it, a missing link for people. Sorry, Tanya. Did yeah, you no, 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 go. Let's, I think let's... it's a missing link because people, like you said, Tanya, and I totally agree with you. They, they can't understand that we actually are, we have that power within us. And until you can actually, to say it is one thing. It's just like an affirmation to say it and not feel it. Like it doesn't work, right? It goes with a lot of things. If you say you want to do something, but you don't really feel like you want to do it, then you don't really want to do it, right? It's the same with energy. And I, I totally agree with you. Like if you're not feeling that you can, you have that power or that type of energy inside of you, then it doesn't work. But we all do, we're all capable. And this is where, like, when we think about the science of a human or the science of, you know, of, um, of energy, right? Or quantum physics that we talked about in another show. And I don't want to go off the, you know, on a, on a tangent of science, right? Because as Tanya explained before, we're not scientists, but we read a lot and, you know, it's very interesting to us. But, you know, if we think about we're just particles shooting together, you know, and we can switch and we're energy. That energy never goes away. So why can't we maneuver that energy? Why can't we make it the way we want, right? That's the question. I believe we can. I believe it's knowing who your true self is. 
that's where it starts. So and you both said it on the nail. It's the feeling that it's that belief that's tied into the feeling. Yes. It's yeah. like consciously we believe it. And when we talk about the subconscious mind and energy, you know, there's still a lot of debate out there whether the subconscious mind is really the, 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 the coherence of the heart energy. So there's still a lot of controversy out on that one. Uh, but it still comes down to that feeling. Yeah. I, and you know what? And the one thing I can say is, even though I understand and there's often that I feel that energy, there are times that I don't, right? And I know that there's times where I, you know, I'm down, like it, it happens, right? Because this is a human experience and a human life. And we go through things throughout our life. And I can tell you in the early parts of my life, I did not feel like I was in control of anything. I was in control of who I was. I was told who I was, you know, all the things um, that were, that happened to me in my life. Those are the things, my environment, those are the things that were controlling me. I didn't think that I had the power within me to heal those things, to get past those things. I didn't feel like my heart and the energy in my heart was I didn't feel it. I didn't feel like it was there, period. Like it just didn't, it wasn't like it felt different or I it didn't even know what it felt like because it wasn't there. So it's really important to be cohesive in that, right? Because if you're not and you don't feel it, then there, there's just, you know, it's impossible to get to. So I think that's really important. Maybe, you know, one of the Tanyas can suggest like where, how do you get there? I guess when well, you started on touching on it, Tanya, well, the other Tanya, <laughs> around, you know, knowing who we are and the, our, our own power, because when we think about it, I, I, to be honest, I think a lot of us are afraid of how powerful we are. Mm -hmm. And when we actually get into, like, actually sit in the seat of who we are, truly who we are to the core, some of us are kind of scared of oh my gosh, like I have all the power to do this. And I remember um, working with a coach one time and she would always say to me, well, Tanya, you have the power, put it there. You want it, put it there. And I'm like, what is she talking about? <laughs> what do you mean put it there? She goes, you have the power to put it there. You use your energy and just what you want, put it there. And I never understood what she meant. But then when I, she goes, you have to know who you are and the power of who you are before you can ever want or get anything. Oh, wow. So that was the thing that was like, oh, like it took me a long time to kind of, you know, go through the path of figuring that out because again, it's always more comfortable to be somebody else than who you truly are and having that confidence to be who you truly are. But then are you connected to your own source and your own energy when you're somebody else? No, not in my opinion, you're not. So yeah. as soon as you're able to connect and really know who you are truly and, and sit in the comfort of that, even though it can be uncomfortable at times, I think having the power that you can wield for lack of better words from that spot is, so I think it all starts with, you know, really knowing you and, all, and really understanding the power that you have within you and, yeah. being, and being comfortable with it. Because sometimes many of us can think, oh my gosh, that's way too much. But is it really like you would like God for me wouldn't give you that power if it was too much for you is the way I see it. Yeah, absolutely. I want to touch on that as well. Like I, I want to go back, you know, and, and give you like an example of my life. Um, I didn't realize how powerful I was until I went on my first meditation retreat and how powerful those meditations were for me. And I started at that point in time in my life, I started to remove the old narratives, right? That's what was holding me back from understanding my power because we believe that we're a certain person. Like you were saying, we believe because that's comfortable mm -hmm. when we are who we are for so long, either because of the stories we tell ourselves or the stories that someone told us or whatever the, the case may be, the traumas that we face, the environment that we're in for all those reasons, we're so comfortable. Like our body is really comfortable being there. And you're right. It's so uncomfortable. You said at times it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable all the time because I, every little piece I was like, okay, no, can I actually be that person? Because that's what, aren't I that person? I, I think I'm that person. It just took a long time for me to actually believe that. So I can tell you my first meditation retreat that the things that I felt were so powerful. And as I continued on that journey in meditation and, and sitting in silence and sitting with myself and understanding and you know, trying to get rid of those narratives. Um, that's when I started believing in my power. And I then I did a silent retreat. This was amazing. And I 
for three days. It wasn't, it was a week, but for three days we were in complete silence. So from morning to night during eating, there was no talking at all. Um, and I remember being in one of the meditations and I know it sounds really crazy, but I was outside my body. I was up looking at myself and it's, it's unusual to happen. And it's the only time that it's ever happened. And I believe it was because I was so inside myself that I was capable of doing that. That was when I really believed I was powerful. How could I possibly be looking at myself, right? I know this is like the out of body experience. And if someone hasn't experienced it, and up until that point, I had, a, I had talked to people who had done it. And for me, I found that hard to believe. How do you, how do you come out of your body and look at yourself? But I did. You know, I did. I actually had to touch the ground to make sure I was still on the ground. Um, and so that was the point in time. And that was a couple of years after I had started with meditation that I truly felt that I had a special power and not a special power to come outside of my body, but that there was a power inside of me that could do more than what I ever felt that I could do in my life. Yeah. So that's when the narrative started to really break down for me. It took a long time after that, even because it was still more comfortable to be that other person, right? Then to have that, that new uh, found person, that new personality, you know, um, you know, people say you can't change your personality, but I always tell Tanya, like I, I, and Tanya knows this, and we've had conversations about this, people change. And I'm always willing to give people a chance even years later, because I believe that people have the power to change, right? To change who they are or who they believe they are or who they were told they are. So I think there's a special power in all of us. Um, and that's my story. That's when I really started to believe that there was something that I could do outside of what I believed that I could, right? right? right. It's, and I'm, I'm listening to the both of you talk about energy and I'm like, you know, for anybody out there that can identify with, it, 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 you know, the new thing now is learning how to train the body to release the old emotion, to have the body forget the old emotion, to forget the trauma, to forget the hurt, to forget the pain in order to create space. And, and, and uh, it's a new thing that's out now that they're, they're promoting. And the question becomes, how do we move that energy? So when the body, when we're willing, intellectually willing to do it, we consciously say we believe it, knowing that there's an unconsciousness that is holding us back. And we're, the, again, the willingness is there. The question becomes, how do we move that energy to yeah. have the body start yeah. to respond to the consciousness and now connect that consciousness to, to, the, to the emotional state of the body? It, it, it takes a lot of, I mean, for me, it, it took a lot of silent work for, for myself to do that because so That's for the only way, yeah, when I, when I, I look think. at some of the, the, the pain, like physical pain that I've actually experienced in my body. So I've had scoliosis when I was 15, um, kept complaining about my knees and all this kind of stuff, but I also was as a child was very insecure about things. And I carried a lot of insecurities about myself inside of my body, you know, rolling that through my head. And it wasn't until, you know, I started doing work on myself um, eight, seven, eight years ago that I realized how all of those thoughts and all of those things that we do, they create different things in our body through energy that, you know, can manifest into different illnesses or pains or whatever. And how, if you don't sit down, and a, a lot of times I, I, I laugh at myself because I remember people telling me, well, you have to just sit down and do the work. And I'm just like, I don't want to do that. Like, that's going to take so much time. Like, why do I need to do that? There's nothing wrong with me. Like, I, don't, I, just, I can just, you know, shove it to the side and it will just work itself out. But it's just it's sitting down and doing that that work on yourself and just being honest and and releasing like writing whatever you need to do whether it's journaling whether it's meditating whatever works for you but sometimes just going through the path of releasing that crying yelling whatever it is that you need to do is is different pieces and 
it's not that you do it once and it's over. <laughs> you will know when it's over because you will feel it. You will, you will you'll feel it inside. So it's, it's a combination of different things for myself that kind of worked. Like, you know, the journaling, the, the crying, the, you know, doing, I actually got like a spiritual coach that was helping me work on some things that I needed, but just kind of brushing it under the carpet was kind of like, hmm, I smell something. What is that smell? <laughs> Knowing that there's something underneath the carpet, but you just don't want to like lift up the carpet and deal with it. So you just cover it and thinking it's, it's going to go away. And it's funny because I remember saying to a, a friend of mine, she was telling me as well that she, you know, my knees are hurting and I'm not, I, I haven't been sleeping well. I've been so stressed. No, she goes, I haven't been sleeping well. So I asked her, are you stressed? And she said, no, I'm not stressed. And I said, well, you know, you've been, you weren't complaining for your knees for a long time. And as you're telling me this story, so she was basically telling me the story of one of her friends that was just complaining to her about something. And I could tell that she was taking on the stress of that. And I said, so are you stressed about, you know, this situation? And she kind of stopped and she had to be like, am I stressed about it? Because when, when you were talking, Tanya, about that unconscious, like a lot of things that we also are trying to deal with from an energy perspective and even heal ourselves from are not even in our awareness half the time. Right. So when we don't know that they're there, how can we solve them or change them or whatever? Um, and it's just being, you know, coming, coming to the awareness and, and knowing that, you know, again, knowing thyself and knowing what works for us, what's what's bothering us and being able to admit things are not working for us. Because a lot of times people, I, a lot of people walk around, including myself, oh yeah, I'm okay, nothing's wrong with me. Really? <laughs> really, like, and, and it's, it comes back, sometimes it's the, the ugly look in the mirror that says, no, I'm not okay. And being okay to say that, that I'm not okay. And I need you know, I need this to be able to, or I need to be able to work on this so I can feel better about myself. And there's no shame in that at all. There's no shame in, in knowing that there's things that you need to work on so you can be better. We so all have, we all have things to work on. Yeah. Everybody, right. That's the reality. Some of us bigger, some of us smaller, like, I mean, but everybody has something to work on. Yeah. So what I used to, it's interesting that we're having, and I'm listening and I'm relating it to myself in my head and I'm listening and connecting with both of you and engaging. And earlier on today, I, I was working with somebody and in the conversation, I asked them to remove the word healing from their vocabulary. And I asked them to replace it with detoxing. Now, when I was dealing with, you know, when I formerly used to deal people that were written off by doctors, and that wanted to, he to heal themselves, so to speak, from whatever they were going through. It was about removing the emotional plaque. I called it sitting in the body. So I gave the analogy that we're looking to create space within the body so that energy can move. So when we've got emotional plaque in there, it's now allowing the body to soften it so it can be released out of the body and um, moved out of the body which comes out of the mirror work the sadness like going through that process of doing the work um, in addition to that what happens when we detox we sometimes feel sick in the initial stages because our all the toxins are being lifted so I said in the beginning stages it's normal for you to feel angry uh, you know irritated uh, depressed anxiety, worried, all those feelings, because your body is now emotionally, it's going to feel like that, just like the body would feel physically, because it's emotionally detoxing. So, you know, for anybody listening, if that resonates with anybody that instead of looking at from a healing perspective, and we move the energy into a more scientific perspective, and look at it like the body is just detoxing itself emotionally. And it that detox, emotional detox for whatever we're working through now creates space for the energy to move freely in the body and to create and invite the type of energy that you're looking to house in your life experiences. Yeah. Well, the reality is that where does it, where your energy flows, your energy goes, right? Mm -hmm. If you're constantly focused on the negativity, the bad stuff, the traumas, the environment, something that happened, I mean, it's really important for me, it's the longevity that you sit in that. 
So, yes. because we, we are still living beings. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be in this human experience, we are going to all go through things. It's how we take those things. Yes. So before I used to take things, so I'd have an argument with someone, it could be months before I would get it out of my head and I would constantly think about it, right? And it would take, it would persist because it was something that I was giving energy to all the time. And I was very, I was more negative, although I seemed from the outside very positive, I felt very negative inside because I knew what I was dealing with. Right. So I would take everything that happened and it would just happen for a lot longer. Now, if I have an argument with someone or a disagreement or something bothers me, the time that I'm sitting in that is so much shorter than it used to be. And that's really important because it's impossible to say that we will never have to go through these things. It's impossible to say because I have an ab a, a, a trauma of abuse, trauma of abandonment, that I'm never going to face those things again because I do. And the reality is I will because there are things that are going to trigger me in my life right. to feel those things because they're things that I felt at a very young age. And those are the more cru crucial and critical years of learning. And those things stuck with me because they were really powerful. And very, um, the trauma that I faced was extreme. They weren't light trauma. It was extreme trauma. And so those things keep reappearing in my life. But what I've done is I won't say that I'm never going to feel again. I'm human. So of course I sit in it. I understand why it's bothering me. I understand what's happened and I move on. Yeah. Because if I sit and dwell on it over and over again, like that's where my, I'm putting my energy. So if, I, if that's where I put my energy, my life will be disastrous. It will be number one, I would be very unhappy all the time. So I choose not to sit there because I know there's so many things that I could be doing that create joy and happiness in my life. Why wouldn't I put my energy there? I don't want to feel like, I, I know it's hard because I've been through a lot. So I, I've walked the shoes. So I'm not just talking from someone who hasn't been there. I have been there. So, but I like to take those shoes off and put a new pair on, like a nice pair of high heels, like, you know, and off I go right into the sunset. I mean, it's not all peaches, but for me, if I sit in that and I can, cause I know in the past I used to do that. So that's really important for me in this journey. And I think for everybody is it's okay to sit there. We should sit there. We need to feel those feelings. We're human. We're going to feel sad and angry. Well, it, also, it also just, it allows the body because the body's intelligent and yes. it wants to heal. So sitting in it actually just gives it a chance to work its way through the body. Of course, yeah. of course, and, because um, it helps you get through what you've already been through right. and to understand yourself even more. So and sitting I think there, if you're aware of it from a conscious perspective that if you're sitting in the feeling not to resist it, but you're sitting in it, not to loathe in it and bathe in it. You're sitting in it to allow it to work through and, and, and be released. I yeah. think it's a whole different feeling when you're, when you're looking at, like you talked about Teresa, the out-of-body experience, when you're sitting in it kind of a, as an out-of-body experience, looking in saying, oh, I get what my body is doing. I get yeah. what the emotion is doing. I get what the soul is doing it is, I, I'm allowing it to work itself through. And you said in a previous show with the three of us on, um, you know, it's like developing a muscle. So you don't sit in it longer, you said. So it's developing that muscle that you don't sit in that space long enough. Yeah, I, I think I was referring to the mind, right? Because when you're in meditation, you are, it's like, it's like a, um, the muscle of the mind and, you know, yeah. and the heart for me too, because it really is cohesive for me. But yeah, I do. I do believe that. And ultimately, though, I want to say that sitting in that for longer periods of time doesn't help anybody. So that's what I want people to understand is it's OK to sit there. And like Tanya was saying, you know, to work through it, because we have to work through those pains and that stuff that's still inside of us, regardless of how much work I've done. I've come such a long way. But there are things that come into my life not on a regular basis, but often enough in this human experience that caused me to sit there and say, you know, wow, okay, I'm still feeling that abandonment. Okay. And I sit there and I know why I feel it. And that's why I can get rid of it. Cause I know why I'm feeling it in that moment. Cause I'm taking it from the past and I'm bringing it to my present life. It doesn't need to be in my present life because that's actually not the situation. So 
I just feel like if we can switch the energy and move it to a more positive outlook, uh, I think that's really important. And we have the power to do that. To do that. It can change. It's like the half, the glass half full, the glass half empty, you know, um, same sort of thing, right? It's how you look at it. Yeah. Right. Right. And I let like me just say this really quickly. I'm going to yeah. ask, I'm going to ask the question, ask the question, actually, what happens when the energy contradicts itself? Well, I mean, energy always contradicts itself, like, uh, especially if it's so opposed, right? So if something happens and I'm having, let's just, I don't know, I'm going to give you an example. I'm having an argument with, with my partner. Right. And I feel like he's not listening to me. Right. I felt, or I couldn't say what I want to say. I always felt I couldn't have a voice, right? And, but that's my own feeling about my past. So the, the contradicting, con, where it contradicts for me is that in fact, he actually does listen to me and I'm actually able to say what I want. <laughs> so, but oddly in my mind, I always think that I can't, but the truth is that I really can, right? So what happens is that when it's contradicting like that, I sit and wonder why, and I know why it's because my body, my emotions, my life for so long was like that. I felt like I didn't have a voice. I felt like people didn't listen. I felt like people didn't understand me or I, you know, I wasn't able to say how I truly felt, but that was then. And this is now. So when they contradict like that, it's okay. There's a reason why they do contradict, right? For me. And in, in, in my experience, that's the way yeah. I've said. Yeah. So when there's right. a huge, so I know Tanya, you, um, I know you and I have had conversations where your energy contradicts yeah. where you're like, I know I feel powerful, but yet you're playing in this, like the energy, you know, you're a powerful being, but yeah. you're playing into this more, um, you're downplaying that powerful self and, and it's con and it, it's, it's like the energy sitting in a confusion. So Tanya, how do you resolve that for yourself? So, so what, how I resolve that for myself now is I ask myself, do I believe that that's true? Because I, again, it comes down to what do you believe? Like, do I really believe that I don't have the capacity or the, the skills or whatever to do this other thing? Is that actually true? So I actually ask myself that question in my head. And it's, it's funny because when you do get those, those situations where it contradicts, you actually have to, I, I actually end up laughing now because I'm like, why did I put it, Why did I think that? Like, where did that come from? But going back to what Teresa said, it comes like we are humans having a human experience and, you know, all those experiences, no matter how much we work on them, they, you know, they'll, they come back, as I say, to test you every once in a while to say, oh, do you remember me? Like, do, mm -hmm. do you really get over me? <laughs> and it, it, I, I feel like they're, they're tests to also, you know, remind us how far we've come, but also remind us. And, you know, when they come up that, no, that's not actually true anymore. It used to be true, but it's actually not true anymore. Can you ever forget it? Oh, I, I like this question. Like, yeah, like, I think, I think you can, but it's, it will always be in the back of your mind if you allow it to be. So going back to what you said, Teresa, focusing on it, like, when you when you do the work and it and it does and it's going to depend on the person as well i think the more work you do and the continued dedication to that focus of the work eventually some people will there will be some people that will not be able you know depending on the severity of the trauma or whatever it is they may not be able to but the constant work that they do is what helps them make them stronger when those times pop up Right. So the other, uh, there was something else I was going to say, and I just lost my train of thought. And it had to do with what Teresa had said earlier about the, oh, sitting in it and going through it. So I find that sitting, when you're sitting in those situations and allowing yourself to feel and go through that, it's actually also taking, I feel like it's almost like a mini, he, a mini healing as you're doing it as a, as the way on the way itself. So I feel like there's different levels of healing as that goes through your body every time that you go through a situation and then asking yourself those key questions like is this true anymore why am I feeling this way and allowing my, yourself to go through that you know helps to bring to the next level of healing but then it also helps you to refocus okay so now that I know I've you know I've sat with this and I thought about it and I know that's no longer true for me at this point what how am I going to move forward now so it actually gives you the power as well to be like okay yeah, that's not true. So 
I now feel I can do this. And it, it just gives you that, like, it's like somebody, um, you know, when you do booster cables on a car, it's like somebody boosts you yes. and you're able to be like, okay, I got this now. Like, I don't, I, I can go on now I, and I can now refocus myself. So I, I, I feel that going, sitting in that and going through that process is almost like a, a different level of healing. So when I think about healing, I think about excavation. So when you have, you have like a, this big plot of land and you can excavate a certain part of it. So that part's all clean but there's still some, you know, debris that you still need. So it's like every time that you, you go through something, it chips away at another level. And then you, you got that level kind of like. So can you ever cross over at the point of no return? I, I want to answer this because <laughs> although I sort of agree, I, Tanya and I have had this conversation. I know we have. <laughs> we have and we have disagreed. And, um, you know, we were at the opposing ends of the, uh, of, of the argument sort of. So I truly believe that in this, human life and this human experience that we will continue to feel those things throughout our life. I don't feel like there will be a point in my life. And I I'm answering for myself that I will never look at those things. Okay. albeit it was severe trauma, but I believe that that sits with us for so long that it's like, um, it's like an, like for me, I always use the onion. Like we have to keep peeling and keep peeling and keep peeling until we get to, you know, the meat of, of the vegetable. Like, I just feel like there's so many layers and it, I mean, and then, I didn't and then, start my journey until my late thirties. Yeah. I spent almost 40 years of my life in that. I, I, you know, will I be able to get through it in my life and get past all of it and understand it fully and completely? I don't want to give people a false expectation. And I myself don't necessarily believe that. Right. So I think that there's always going to be healing. I feel like there's always going to be something, a trigger or something that happens because there are things that happen in life that are big moments, deaths, uh, loss of job, relationships, those things are going to pop up again. So they'll give us that opportunity. The thing that is really important in all of this for me is like I said, and like you, Tanya, you, you also mentioned is not to sit there for long. And to, to sit there because we need to understand why we're there, but we will go back to it. It gets easier every time because we're like, I know why I'm doing this. I know why I'm feeling this way, but now I can move past it. So I always feel like that's going to have an effect in my life to what degree. And like you said, there are many healings, so it'll get better and better every time. And it has, and that's what I'm talking about. The longevity of it, it used to be months. Then it was weeks. Then it was days. Then it was hours. Now it's minutes. Now it's, I'll sit there. Okay. I'm feeling this. I'll go sit by myself or I'll think about it. And then it's done. So it's still going to be there. That's what I think. That's my perspective. I know we've, I, we've, had, we've had, you know, just for Tanya, we're, we're inviting you in. Like we've had <laughs> lengthy discussions on opposing views because on the flip side, um, and just for the audience out there, it just, you know, you can be the bestest of friends and, and, and still have opposing views. It's beautiful. Of course. <laughs> That's why we talk, right? Because to try to, yeah. It's so, I love it. Because it also solidifies in your soul. When we talk about energy, it gives an opportunity for you to reinforce your belief and do it in love because it's really about you in that moment where, you know, for me, it's all about if we're, if, if I feel like if we're powerful beings, then we have the ability to recreate and to change. And I'm, you know, and it's the, our ability to sit in the moment of the reality that we're looking to create and have our bodies transform into that. Because if we morphed it into this, even though we were triggered into it, it's the level of work or the ability for us to let go. Like everybody's got different levels of risk and letting go and trauma and all the rest of that. But I thought to myself, for me, in this lifetime, that if I were going to believe in something, I would quicker believe that it is possible for me to cross over with the point of no return. Um, because that's why I do the work is to dissolve it and to believe that my body can forget all that and embrace a new patterning, a new emotional feeling, mm -hmm. a new experience that doesn't involve that. It doesn't mean that I won't ever feel angry in this experience, 
but can I let go of the emotion that was that angry emotion that was attached to that experience over here? That's certainly what I am believing for. But it doesn't again diminish or say excuse or ex make extinct the emotion of anger or the emotion of anxiety or the emotion of worry. It's just those feelings aren't attached to the past experiences. Um, Absolutely. So Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yeah. That's where the point. So that's what that, for me. That's what I'm working for is to, for, to have my body emotionally forget all those feelings that were attached to that experience um, because then that creates a different heart brain coherence within within my sphere um so that that's been the behind the scenes candid <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I, have a, I, have, I have a really unusual question then so so because i also believe when you create something new do you do you feel that you could still have feelings like the similar feelings from that old situation which have nothing to do with that situation pop up in a new situation that you created as a test as a test yeah as a test to see where you're at i just don't believe it happens because when you're for my belief system i just believe that once your body has accepted so we talk about that acceptance that emotional feeling it, there is no test because you've eliminated, you, you have allowed your body to go into that meditation to release the, the detoxing, the releasing the void. You're allowing in that void, your body to feel what it feels like without that attached to it. So there's in my, again, I'm not a scientist. This is not proven. This is just strictly Tanya's belief system. Yeah. <laughs> so somehow for me, it, I, I'm not expecting it to show up as a test because for me, and the reason why I'm doing the work is that that experience just doesn't exist. Yeah. So for me, I don't believe that. And I think it's really hard to tell people that if you were abused, that you'll ever forget that. And that'll never come up in your life. Or I think it's really difficult to say um, that you faced major abandonment issues because your mother left or your father left or for whatever reason that you'll ever get past that. Um, I think it's really difficult to say that to people and wholeheartedly believe it. Um, and this is just from my perspective, of course, I can only speak from experience, right? But I feel those are such strong traumas that to say someone, to say to someone that you could totally change that belief system, I, I really struggle to say that it can, can, can be completely gone. I'm not saying that you can't work through those things quicker and it can't get better because it does. Um, and I'm proof of that. And I know because I've had both of those major traumas in my life. And I feel like I'm in a better place. But I can also tell you that I also have to sit with those emotions with other things. Right. You know? And I think it's and layered. So it I, is I'm layered. Just, it is. It, so I think that there's a process to it where you go through the awareness, you go through the healing stages. So you allow your body to heal. So yes, you go through, you work through the process. And then once you get to that place where your body is, is accepted that it can move on, then you have the ability to create. Now that creation process takes work because you're now defining yourself, you're now, and then we talk about what we focus on. So, and I'm only gonna give the example because when I was, you know, in my early teens, preteens, you remember back in the day, I'm gonna date myself. Remember Sears catalogs used to come in the mail? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I used to flip through those magazines because I was going to be the first woman to stay home and raise my kids. And I was planning nurseries and this, and all my attention was focused in being this mom that I created this narrative in my head as a, as a preteen only to live it out later on in my life. And that's where all my energy went. So I was no longer focused on the trauma of what was happening to me as a result of my upbringing, but now directing my attention to know that my body was capable emotionally feeling the feelings of recreating a new legacy a new era yeah i can i can appreciate where you're coming from i know where you're going with this and i i get it right but i want to ask you candidly that do your abandonment abandonment issues come up come up in your life and of course they do because i that's haven't that's my point so and, i'm not but, saying that you can't create things right what I'm saying is that i believe that these things will come up in your life. 
Right. And so when I will say to that, that aspect of it, I'm not 100% focused in doing that work to resolve that to, in the fair. moment, to say that all my energy is focused on, not focusing on abandonment when it comes up, but focusing on what it's like to be in community. Yeah. So all that yeah. work isn't, does that make sense? Like, yeah. so all yeah. of a sudden, it's like, I, I am, I'm slowly doing it, mm -hmm. but I'm not submerged in the community feeling to say that all of a sudden I can sit here and say, yes, abandonment. I I've resolved that because I'm submerged emotionally. My body's intelligence system is just submerged in community. I get what you're saying. I do. I really do. I think it's, I think there's no right answer here. I just think there's different <laughs> perspective. No, I really do. And I can appreciate both, both of what you've said on this, right? Um, I'm just going by my own experience. And do I, am I hopeful that this can one day totally resolve itself and I'll never even look back at my past? Absolutely. There's a hope. I'm, I'm a, you know, I, I have a lot of faith and I do have hope and I believe myself, right? And I do believe, but what I want you know, because this is, a, this is a talk show and we want to be able to be candid. I, I myself don't necessarily believe that it'll ever leave because leave. I will go through things in my life where it comes up again. I mean, hypothetically, what if my partner were to leave? Like, I mean, then of course I would feel those abandonment issues again. You know, it may happen when our kids go to university. Like I might feel that like there, there will be things that come up that bring those things up, not because they're real in that moment. But that gives me the opportunity to understand that they're not real again, that that was a past, my past life, my current past life for every, anyone who believes in a past life, but my current okay. past life that, you know, that those things no longer serve me and they're not true because of what I knew. So do I believe it'll never come up? It probably will with different circumstances, but I am hopeful that one day, if that does happen, I'd be like, oh, whatever, not everybody abandons me. It's just because this situation happened or, you know, will it happen? I don't know. I guess only time will tell, right? But I do, I understand where you guys are coming from. And I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, we have a, different, a few, like a little bit of a different perspective on this type of energy. Yeah. But ultimately for me, it's about where you put that energy. In that moment, if you can flip a switch, right? Um, and it's not like just a light switch because it takes a little more time than just a light switch. But if you can flip that switch somehow and change where you're focusing that energy, that's what's really important in all this. And that's what I, you know, and I love that what Tanya said, ask yourself the question in that moment, you know, is that what I really believe? Is that what's, and that's partially you said it, but that's what I do. Like, is that what's really happening here? No, it's not. And I yeah. realize and recognize, I didn't recognize it before though. That's my point. It took me a long time to be able to recognize that that wasn't where I'm at anymore. And it was because I was so comfortable with where I was at. Like I said, for the first 40 years, these are all the things I felt. I was comfortable there. That's who I was, right? So it took me a long time. But the important thing for me in all of this is where that energy goes afterwards, where, what you decide to do with it in that moment, what, what switch you decide. You know, Do you decide to, to dwell in that? and to be miserable? Or do you say, no, that's because of something else? And how do I resolve this in this moment? You know, how can I better myself in this moment? What can I do to make the situation better? Those are all the things I look at because obviously in the past, I was also part of the problem, right? So when arguments would happen, I was also part of that argument. I had a very argumentative family life. All we did was fight, you know, and so that was it. And I remember somebody telling me that I love to fight. And I was like, you know what? I think you're true. I think that's true. And I think that's right. Because it's not that I like to, it's just, I'm so comfortable there. I know that, you know, that's what I grew up with. Right. And, but I don't do that anymore. Everything is very short, even if it is a fight or an argument, like what's a true fight, but like, I mean, like in an argument, it, I'm there in a state of an argument with somebody. It's very short lived. I won't let it go anywhere. That's the difference. I think that's what's really important to understand in our energy and our power is how we can shift that energy, right? And how does that make you feel when you shift that energy? Like, I feel fantastic. I feel like, wow, yes, I, I don't have to feel those feelings. I can be happy in this moment. Yeah. And I guess for me, the, the most exciting thing, I guess, when you're able to shift that piece is 
the creating the new. So the energy that we can use and just the power in creating things, like we are, we are, we are very um, powerful creators when we think of them. When you like think of times when you said you wanted something or something was gonna happen and it just appeared because you made it happen. You put it there, you made it happen. So when I think about, you know, how we can use our energy and, you know, how we can focus our energy, the creation of things and what we could create, like if something's not working out the way that we want it to, we can create something new. <laughs> I, I know it sounds so simple and magical, but we actually- It have actually that. is simple though. and magical. Yeah. I like, like you said that, sorry, it is simple and magical. It is. I it is. It really, really is. But it's it's being able to shift that energy. Yes. Imagine if we never, like if we, because before I had no time. All my time was in misery because everything I thought, and honestly, a million miles an hour, there it went. My brain went, I couldn't sleep. Insomnia I had at times because my thoughts were just overwhelming and they weren't positive. It wasn't like I was overwhelmed with creation, but I love that. Imagine the time if you're not dwelling on that negative energy, what you yeah. have the time for. Absolutely. And it just creates so much more space. And when we're working from that energy, like in my experience, when I'm working from that energy that I created, it doesn't feel tiring. Like I feel like, oh, I have so much, there's so much more I can put on my plate because I'm actually in alignment with the energy that I want to have. And I'm in alignment or God spark with where I want to direct and create things. So, yeah. I like the way you said that, Tanya, that you're, you, you, you're not tired in that space because you're in alignment with that. How long do you spend there? It takes a lot of time. To, I mean, not a lot of time. It takes a lot of, I guess, when, when I'm not, I, I, I directly know when I'm not in it because I start worrying, I start having anxiety, I start having all of these things. When I'm there, time passes and I don't even realize, like, I'm like, all this time passed, but I feel like I have so much time. Like I have, I've accomplished so much. So I don't even have, when you said, how much time do I, do I spend there? I try to spend more of my time there because I find it gives me more energy. And it is, because it's aligned with the flow of energy for me. And I find that time is, there's no essence of time when you're in that space, you get way more done than you think that you could. And it doesn't, it feels effortless. So I, I, I put a lot of effort and focus into ensuring I can spend more time in that space. Right. Can I ask you, um, uh, when you're in the creation process, like you said, you mentioned earlier on that when you put something out there, you know, Teresa commented on it being magical and it sounds simple and easy and it actually really is. We complicated, I feel, as human beings. Are you aware that your body has emotionally accepted it? Are you aware of that? Or is it just kind of like a blind faith and you trust your body? Like how, are, like what, what goes through, what goes on with you? I think for me, it's more of a blind faith. I just say, I'm just going to do this and whatever happens, happens. And but what I do notice when I truly believe and I, and I consciously know that I believe that it can happen, there's a different feeling to it. So an example I'll use the other day, I, you know, there's this client that I want to work with. And I said, you know what, I'm going to work with her. Like by, by May, I'm going to be working with her. And I kind of just put it there. Like I just put it out there and I just kind of let it go also because I didn't want to be like, okay, I have to have it because that also is energy in a, in a way that we don't want to the resistance, right? Resistance. Right. So I just kind of, I'm like, I'm going to just put it out there and we'll see what happens. And it happened way before that time that I expected and I did nothing. So I think one of the things as well, when you, when you truly believe and you put that out there from an energy perspective with the, with the belief part, I find the belief part actually makes it very simple. That's a simplicity, I guess, a simplicity in it that I feel because I, it's like a, it's like a knowing, like, you know, like deep down that it's going to happen. So there's no fear. There's nothing around it because your, your belief is you're so solid in your belief in it, that it's, it's there. You've already put it there. You're just waiting for it to appear. Yeah. I want to touch on that because I think it's so important what you said there, you know, you have to let it go though. And that's really important because when you start to dwell on what you really want, 
you start to have the other parts of that come up, the other narratives, right? You spend so much time where you're like, well, why isn't it happening? Or it's not going to happen. And then you put your mind in that state. Whereas what you said is, this is what I want. I believe in it. And that's it. Done. I, it's happened to me several times in my life. Several times. I mean, and what happens as, to the, like, then, then there's that piece. Let's touch upon this piece. Because there's the other piece of energy where there's focused intention. And the focus intention is that we now spend time creating that image and we're submerged in that image of what we want to create that our body starts to accept it. And both of you touched on, you know, we feel happy in that space. We're more energized in that space. But it's not the letting go. It's the submerging, submerged, being submerged in the feeling. Of, I, I lost my time there. Yes. Um, and the feeling of it. So there's there's two aspects of it. The letting go is the letting go. Yes. I know what you're I know where you're going with this. So when you're submerged, so you're talking about when you're in a med are you talking meditation and creation? Or not necessarily meditation and creation. It's like you can be in a wake and say, we can be in this moment right now. And this is how powerful we are. We can have a whole other part of our sphere that is submerged into the feeling of I know what focus. you mean. I know what you mean, but I don't think that you can submerge and stay there. I don't feel like if you are in creation mode, that's one thing. So if you're saying, I believe like, like Tanya said with her client, I'm going to work with this client. I have faith, faith and I truly believe that. And that was it. But did, did, I'm going to ask you, Tanya, did you sit there and dwell on it? Did you submerge yourself in it? Did you envision it over and over and over and over again? No, but I did do steps to, I did take steps that would take me closer to that. So right. I think, but I, and I, but what I could say is I don't remember doing them consciously, which is. Okay. Important. That's, that's. So, it, so I, it's, so it's almost like, I guess, and I'm not sure if this is where you were going with this, Tanya, so you, you put it out there and then all of a sudden you're just working towards, you're, you're automatically just working towards that thing that you put out there, not even realizing that you're working or putting effortless work to towards that. So right. it's almost like you put it out there and you have blind faith and then everything just it's aligns. Gonna, I'm only gonna speak That's, from my mother experience with my Sears catalog, because yeah. I'm gonna tell you I was focused on <laughs> tension. Uh, and, and you know, like it was something that I, I put out there, I knew, and I didn't know what it felt like, but I now had this catalog show up four times a year that gave me the opportunity to flip through it. And I would spend every waking moment, like I'd be in school and I'd daydream about, you know, what the stroller would look like. <laughs> <laughs> so there was focused intention of manifestation and creation in an awake. It wasn't me. I, I couldn't meditate to save my life back in those days. But there yeah. was a different type of meditation happening because I was completely submerged in the feeling of all the images. That's why we do vision boards. Like it was completely submerged, but I owned it. Like this was a non-negotiable for me. This was a given for me. This was not an if it happens. These books were there to support and enhance my focused intention of, you know, this is what it's going to look like. Now I was now building in my mind, something that didn't even come, like that was futuristic. Anytime that I have ever manifested anything, I can tell you that I didn't sit and dwell on it and I didn't have intention folk in like the focus that you're talking about. Yeah. That's not the way it's happened for me. So similarly to what Tanya said, um, it was something that I believed and that I, it's sort of subconsciously, I work towards that. Um, and, and that's every single time. It wasn't something that I sat and dwelled with. And like you saying, like we're really hyper-focused on it. And not to say that that doesn't work. You are so happy. You were going to make that happen no matter what. Well, that I just fantastic. owned it. It wasn't. You owned it. It was like you were deal. there already. Yes. Right. So it's sort of similar because to me, when I say it, I'm there already. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. I just don't sit there over and over again in that thought. Whereas you did. And I'm not saying that doesn't work. It does work. But I was me, just so happy. I was like, this is what the stroller is going to look yeah, like. Yeah, but for me, it's seriously, like what Tanya said, like I took steps, but they were subconscious. Steps. They weren't, I wasn't doing it consciously anymore. I said it and I made it happen. Um, and that's how it worked for me. So I know what you're saying. So the, the hyper-focused intention, 
yes. Like I can say that I know people that have said, I'm going to do this and no matter what I'm, and they've done it, yeah. you know? And so that works as well. I'm not saying it doesn't, but for me, I don't like to sit and like for the reason I don't do it and sit and dwell in it is because that I have found that if I keep that energy there, I start questioning it. And the less yeah. I spend time there, the less time I spend there, the more, to, the more it happens because I don't question anymore because I really, in that moment, I'm going in, like Tanya said, with blind faith, it's going to happen. And that's where I'm at. And more often than not, it has worked out. So, you know, I, I'm not saying one works or the other, like what they both, both work because both, I agree. Yeah. You said it. Absolutely. You said it, well, you said it and they both work because you said it, there's areas of my life that I'm not able to do that same intentional focus with. I have to let it go because as you said, the more time I spend there, the more I question it. So, and I guess for me, it's understanding where that, where you're at and what, what, which one do you draw up on in the moment? Mm -hmm. Because they both equally work for me. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I want to give you a chance to respond to anything. Yeah. Cause it, cause even when I think about, I remember one time in high school wanting to buy a red car and I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to buy a red car. And then I, all of a sudden I started seeing red cars. So I think sometimes when, I guess, depending on what it is and where the focus is, you, when you put something out there, things, it just starts coming to you. Cause you, you believe you put that, you, it's almost like you set the intention with the universe or higher beings to bring something to you. And it's almost like there's people working behind the scenes to bring it to you without you having to do anything or keeping your focus to make sure that it happens as well. So I, I, I find that just the power of that, like just how, you know, the things that we, we our minds and, and the things that we have the power to do is out of this world, I feel sometimes. Like sometimes you'll put something, you, you say things and you don't realize how, how important and how powerful your thoughts are, how powerful your words are. Because when you put them out there, you're, you're creating something with that energy that you have. And it's aligning something for you, whether, what, so, and I think this is where the intention and the beliefs behind those intentions become very important as well. Because mm-hmm. we say things and sometimes we say them, you know, not to not me and just be like, oh yeah, I'm just saying this. But what are you really saying? And what are you really doing? And what are you really believing? Because they, you're, you're actually, you're physically creating those things for yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and I appreciate both of you, how you said it and leave it and just kind of go blindly. There's areas absolutely, as, you know, I want to reiterate that I have to do in my life because yes, Teresa, you're correct. I, and you know me behind the scenes, I will question it. To- of course. <laughs> well, of course. I'm not saying to do it blindly though, right? Because when you're doing it, it's not blind anymore. When you're consciously putting it out there, it's not really blindly doing it. You're doing it with intention. There is an intention already in it. I, what I guess my point is not dwelling on it. Because I feel like dwelling on it, especially for me, causes me, like you said, to question all those things. But I know that for a fact, like I've said, you know, this is the kind of job I want. I want to work part time. I want this money. And, and I let it go because I know if I question, I'd be like, well, I don't deserve that. Like because of all those past narratives, they've still come back. So instead I just sat and there it was. And it appeared in the most unlikely of places. Like it wasn't like, and so my thing is, if you put that energy there, it's already the thought. Like Tanya said, you've already put the thought out there. It's really important that that's where you start, right? And not mm-hmm. to question it. Because once you start questioning it, then you've just, you've put it away. Right. right? We got a minute left. Uh, I, I, want, I want each of you to have a moment to share one last little nugget of something that somebody can do in order to move the energy within their system. So please, both of you, I'd like both of you to have a shot. Um, for me, the- one thing I would say, and I, and I, tr- I practice this a lot myself, be careful of the energy that you submerge or surround yourself with. Mm. Um, be mindful of your thoughts of the things that you, you know, you go that go through your head constantly, that also change the way that you feel and, and can also change your energy. So be be mindful of the energy that you let in and protect the energy that you have within that's really powerful. So finding time and things that, you know, work for you to protect your energy, but also to, to be able 
to create from that, you know, because you also need the, the, the pot to be able to create from. So protect the pot. Nice. I like that. I, very, I like that. Very, yeah, very, very, uh, that's a very good nugget. <laughs> it's a great nugget. And I agree with you. But I think the evolution really comes from within. And that's yeah. what I want people to understand is that you really need to sit with yourself and go inside and understand who your true self is. And the only way to get there is on your own. And we have the power within us. Um, and we have the power to change the energy that we're feeling, uh, things that are happening. We have all that power within us. Remember, it's not easy. And that's the other thing. It takes work and it takes time. But I assure you, even if it's small tidbits and it's like taking something that affects you and you take that and sit in it in the moment and try to let that go and change that narrative or that energy in that moment to something positive, just try it. Like, what do you have to lose is my question from changing from a negative to a positive experience. I mean, that's worth a try. And that's where I would leave people is to give it a shot. Even if it sounds out of like some, like something that you can't do, why not? If you could feel better in that moment, why not try it? So try to shift that energy in the moments where you're feeling down or negative energy, try to switch to a positive energy. Yes. That's what Absolutely. I would say. Thank you guys. Um, you know, uh, thank you for it. This was a nice conversation. It was, <laughs> we could go on for another hour. Another hour, I was going to say. You have another <laughs> right, hour? It, it feels really quick. Um, this one felt really quick. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, we're running out of time. Um, thank you guys for joining me in such a conversation this evening. It was nice. It was enlightening. Um, and, you know, it gave, it gave a lot of depth and perspectives that, you know, the audience out there, everybody's going to connect to something differently from a belief system. So thank you guys for offering diversity to the conversation uh, that gives people an opportunity to think and, and make choices and decisions for themselves. I appreciate that. Uh, I just want to, you know, Tanya, you have T your TSI consulting group. So I'm encouraging everybody, um, you know, you're a leadership coach and trainer and you help leaders in the technical world um, to lead their teams effectively and to communicate. Um, um, uh, also, sorry, and an L, you're an NLP coach. Right? <laughs> I think I, I think I messed that one up. <laughs> um, you can also find Tanya on Instagram, and you can find her on Facebook and LinkedIn under Tanya Smith, Tanya Smith International, and the TSI Consulting Group. I don't think I messed that one up. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to work with Tanya, yeah. just look for her. Teresa and Tanya, you can also, if you want to reach out to me privately on Tanya Talks and you want to get in touch with them, feel free to reach out to me on Tanya Talks. Guys, this is Tanya Talks. I'm your host, Tanya Ricketts. Real issues, real people, real events, um, just real talk. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening and tuning in. Uh, if you want to take your life to the next level, please visit thetanyaexperience.com and remember to subscribe and like. Uh, the Tanya Experience and Tanya Talks on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube and LinkedIn. All right. That was a mouthful. Good night, everybody. Thanks again, ladies. Good night. Good night. Thank you.